Hello everybody and welcome back to brand new Dead Overflow video. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe. We're like actually at 50k, so big thank you to everybody who subscribed. Let's get to 100k. And also as a thank you for the 50k, you actually get all of my courses in half the price and even more. For example, this one will be for the next week at this price, so make sure to hurry up and get it before it expires. Also, my bug bounty course expires in like four days. So yeah, everything is half the price. Make sure to get it. Everything is in the description. Now let's actually go with this very interesting video. So yeah, the student actually reached out to me, one of my one of my fans, and he actually sent me both the front end, as you can see, and the back end. As you, I mean, the front end and the back end. Sorry, and he told me that his teacher saw this. The assignment was actually to make a simple calculator in Python, Flask to be precise. Uh, and what actually had had to do is it had to calculate stuff for you. So uh, let me actually show you. Hold on, let me get the browser. So this was actually the assignment. You actually put like two plus two and you click calculate and it gives you the result. However, the teacher told him that it actually had to firstly wait a little second, show like a loading message and then show the result. However, you saw that it actually didn't do that. And that's because there is a bug in this code. However, the teacher also, upon the reviewing of the student's code, saw that there is a deadly vulnerability here. He just told him, hey, there's a deadly vulnerability here. If you can find it, I will bump up your grade because currently this doesn't work as it's supposed to work. Uh, so yeah, let's actually help him out in today's video. So hopefully he gets a better grade. He reached out to me and sent me actually both the back end and the front end and told me, help me. I have no clue what the vulnerability here is. Neither does ChatGPT. Again, ChatGPT cannot figure out some logical stuff, but that's actually where we get to help them. So let's actually find a vulnerability here. So first of all, let's review the backend code and see what it actually does work. So I'm going to obviously start with code review before I actually go to dynamic testing. So this is the static testing. So currently we only have a one route and it supports both get and post. I don't actually understand why post would be allowed, but it doesn't actually parse it here. So I assume it's a mistake, but you know, you don't actually need this. So let's keep on going, but I'm not gonna actually touch this code. First of all, it checks whether there is a message, which, okay. And then it actually calls render template for the home HTML and passes that uh, message from the query parameters. Otherwise, if it does not exist, it's going to be result is interesting okay so i'm assuming this is for translations so if you want a different language for example uh from for bosnian it will be a message like poruka yeah so or resultat yeah that actually how you would write it so maybe like so you would probably do something like this for the bosnian and like two plus two it, it will tell you what the result is again I, 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 it's smart it, it's definitely in the assignment as he told me that and let's actually now see the front end because the back end is not really interesting and so far from what i've seen here everything seems to be secure the front end is very comes very interesting there's a lot of stuff going on uh first of all uh we have a function defined but we will skip that function let's go before we actually even execute it again go like you have to go Step by step. Okay, hold on. My friend is calling me to play Counter Strike with him. I'm recording, dude. Uh, yeah, you will be famous. <laughs> wow. So let's go. Let's go. Let's not get bothered by that. So first of all, we get a button, which is the sender ID. That's it. After the window loads, and this is this button, and we assign an onclick event for that button, and it firstly gets actually the first number, second number gets the value out of these input fields. And it calls a parse int to parse an integer from that actual value. Because remember, this is string. Again, very smart and very basic stuff. And then it actually gets a progress text. And this is this text right over here. And it assigns this right to it. Very interesting. Okay. Um, after that, it calls progress.inner text. Inner text, amazing that you did that. Inner text is going to be a safer option instead of inner HTML. If this was inner HTML, case closed, vulnerability. But no, inner text. And then message, because this is the user control data. And if you could put inner HTML here, then you know that's bad. And then we call the X function with the number one, number two, the message, which can be controlled by us, and false. Okay, false is very interesting. It's actually feedback and we call it after a second. You might have seen that it actually doesn't actually call after a second, it calls right away, but there's a good reason for that. And I'll actually explain to him why. So the function X after being called, you know, takes number one, number two message, which is user controlled. Both of these are controlled, but they're numbers, so you can't do much with them and feedback. So result or res is number one, number two, 
Okay. And then there is this feedback thing, which looks buggy to me. I, I don't understand why you did it. Like, I, I guess you want to show off that you can do these, but this is not correct. Um, okay. After that, it checks whether feedback is true. I guess it will always be true. Why is it false here? I, I guess he actually, I don't know. <laughs> why is it false here? It should be true. But regardless, it's going to be ignored because, of course, the way it's developed, but the way it's put. This expression is not really correct, but that's actually besides the point. Uh, if it's feedback, okay, if it exists, which you always will, um, it gets again. Now it gets, now it calls it result, but it still gets the progress text. And it says again, inner text, message, and rests. Very simple stuff. However, it then actually calls return. I'm not really sure why. Ah, I guess I know why. Maybe the X function can be later than used. So you can maybe put feedback to be false. So it doesn't actually do all of this. It just returns the result. So it can actually be used in the code somewhere else instead of here. That's actually kind of smart that you do it. But let's actually talk about the core problem now, which we may, some of you might have already saw what the vulnerability could be. Let's actually inspect element the page before we even dig any further. Uh, let's go back and let's refresh the page. As you can see, the console is currently cleared. That's the code. Uh, sources, index, that is the code. Obviously, it works. And the inner text is result is. This is result is. And it's actually being passed here to the inner text. So let's put 2 plus 2. The result is 4. But you might see that we actually have an error in the console. And that error is unexpected identifier. Is. What? Where? Even in the code is. Huh. So that must tell us that is in the actual only where only the place where is is mentioned. Oh, oh, should do it like this is in three places or two places is and is here and here. So chances are this is where it executes. And for some odd reason is is being treated as JavaScript. OK, let's actually put a message then to see to pinpoint what exactly is happening here. So let's put a message and let's put testing, just testing plain testing and let's put two plus two four and then it gets an unexpected number <laughs> where does it fail ah see this is it this is what it's trying to execute if you click on the console right here this is what it's trying to execute okay so let's actually see what it actually does here again an error ah okay so it's trying to execute this last bit weird but let's put message let's put like then alert one and let's see what happens. Let's just put alert one. So these, okay. Wow. It executes. Why, why, why would it execute? It's literally, why would it execute? You may ask yourself. It's literally alert one and then a number after it. And then alert one four. Well, you can actually add this to make it a bit clearer, but to comment everything after it, and it will still call. But you might have noticed that alert doesn't call immediately. It calls after a one second, which tell us or tells us that the set timeout function is the evil function here. See, if you didn't actually know this already, I showed this on my channel, but by set timeout can contain like maybe alert one, can contain functions like literal functions, defined functions, but it can also, for some odd reason, I don't know why, contain strings, just like that. And given the fact that the function X has this return where it actually can con return the user controlled message, what it actually returns is if we call X, let's call X, uh, let's go with one, two, and the message, um, let's put uh, alert one again. So alert one, so now you understand this. And again, let's put true just so it's actually syntax, okay? As you can see, this is what the function returns. And once we put this into the set timeout, oh my God, Oh my God, oh, allow pasting. How do you allow pasting? I hate the fact that I actually added this, even though it's making people more secure. It's just annoying for me, honestly. So yeah, put, boom, alert one. So that's why this code is vulnerable. Hopefully the student will now actually explain this to the teacher and get a better grade. Hopefully we did some good stuff. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below what you think about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.